Hi everybody, my name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. I'm Nicole. I'm Jason. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour channel. We thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. In fact, we are the Yahoo and the Tour 2 channel. We are also the Yahoo and the Tour 3 channel. And it may seem like we may be the Yahoo and the Tour 4 channel very soon. So um, for those who are our immediate family and friends here that we love dearly, and this is very interesting times for all of us. Last night, we got another 13. Teen strikes on the Yahoo and the Torah 2 channel regarding the Hallelujah Scriptures grifters and their criminal enterprise of silencing everybody and getting them quiet and being able to sell their house and to do their evil that they are doing. And so we are exposing this and we will always be exposing this. I specifically am exposing this. And when I say we, it's not my family. This is all my motives. This is all my uh, goals is I do not want the people of Yah to be grifted anymore. And so we need to stand tall and we need to, every time that they do this, every time that they strike these channels, we're just going to keep going back up. They can strike out everything. They've, they've struck out Yahoo and the Torah, the main one. Um, we're on two strikes on that one. We're on two strikes on my J Boss Man 008. Yahoo and the Torah, uh, I don't know what they're going to do on that. They may end up uh, banning this channel right, right out of the gate. We will see. I am going. I am not going to remove the videos they say are privacy related because I don't think they're privacy related. Um, if we cannot discuss crimes that are being actively partaken in front of us, then that's a problem. And I will. If YouTube wants to kick me off for being truthful, then that is fine because the truth will set us free, and that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be telling the truth. We're supposed to be exposing works of darkness. And um, what do you guys think? How you guys doing? Good. Good. Everyone out there, everyone's real quiet. Everyone, lean forward a little bit. Pull your chairs up here so these our family and friends and those who we love dearly can hear your your sweet little cracking voices um, as you guys are getting deeper voices. How did you didn't like that, Jade? Um, I don't think Eli's, Eli's cracking. Eli, Eli's the only one whose voice is cracking now. Kind of goes down, so ah, it goes up and high and cracks. Is that okay? You sound like a parrot. You sound like a parrot. All right. So, what do you guys think? How, how are how are you guys? You guys have been around a lot of these battles, a lot of our stuff here um, that you've seen over the years and years and years. I mean, we had our house raided because we stood up for a child who was being molested by a whole group of Christians, and um, we fought. We cost us twenty thousand dollars to fight for this kid, and we would do it again. Same for this. Um, $800,000 has been stolen from the backs of the people of Yah to these criminal organization and they are um, Deborah Wessel and Ken Wessel they are stealing from the people and they are they're actively doing it and somebody needs to stop them and so uh, I will do everything that I possibly can are you guys battle warrior yet are you guys tired of this no I think it needs to be dealt with I think uh, there was nothing to hide it wouldn't be such a big deal and they wouldn't be getting struck down. We wouldn't be getting these strikes saying it's a privacy problem when it's public information. When it's literally, you can literally just search up on the internet who owns this house and things like that sort. It's all public information. Yeah, and why would we be hiding things of this nature at all? Why would why would a little corporation care what a little tiny place like us or a little tiny channel with less than 100 subs, what do we think and what do we care unless they had absolutely everything to hide? And we are not done with our investigation. When we are done... I will do like I said, and I will make a weekly call to the FBI and to those who want to deal with international crime until somebody will take notice. It may take me years to do this, but there's always tracks, and they just updated their business paperwork again, and we saw all of their changes and all their stuff. So we're all over the top of this stuff. And um, if you guys want to see even more shifty, shady stuff, they had their whole United and Yaw grifting thing they did the other day. They deleted it right off YouTube. Uh, and there's copies around, just so everyone knows. But they deleted it so they did not expose themselves again. So what kind of United and Yaw event is that where they don't even leave it online? Um, you know, praising Yah, you know, so these guys are definitely grifters and they've exposed themselves and we are at war. And so we're just a little channel. So here we go. This is, uh, give me some praise and worship. Give me something good that is there. Give me something. I am, I would like to praise our creator. And I've said this before, but I love my family. I am thankful that he has given us families. I'm, I'm thankful for the male and female side of the world where they become a single flesh and we break our own families out and we have just a tremendous amount of family. I love his support structure that he has given to us and in a proper 
relationship, the family means absolutely everything. And it, it's just an, it's an amazing thing. All right, Kay, what do you got? I'm thankful for the sun rising, the sunrise. When the sun comes up in the mornings and it looks beautiful and it brings the heat and you know it's going to be a nice day, that's a great thing. That's a great thing. I think we've used the sun before. But, uh, I can't use the sun. Eli was going to use the sun. You guys are all my sons, but you can't use the sun anymore because we've used that. Okay, Jade, what do you got? I was thankful for the dry season. As we have two seasons down here, we are starting to get into the dry season. So that means the rain is stopping and there's going to be more sun, more daylight. But you forgot about the other third part of the season that comes. The wind. The wind That's season. Two or three months. Two or three months. We have two or three months of wind that is hurricane level style winds that just rip day and night. It huffs and it puffs and it blows our roof off. It does. It would almost blow our house down if it could. Eli, what do you have? I'm still thinking. You're still thinking? You have nothing? You have ten oh. fingers, ten toes. You have two holes in your nose. You can breathe air in. You have a hole in your mouth. You can gasp air in. You oh. have two holes in the side of your head. Well, you can hear with. I've been used. You have two other. Uh, you have two other holes in the in your, that you see out of. What What is there that we do not have to glorify our Creator about? Oh, I mean, there's everything to glorify. About. Give me something. Um, just like um. How about? I, thanks, we've already used. <laughs> how about bugs? Do you like the bugs? No. Not at all. <laughs> no. But what about the chickens? Do your f- chickens eat the bugs? I think so. You think so? And so without bugs, what would we have? Uh, Three chickens. Four chicken feet to you. You have a lot of spiders. You have a spiders looking for you because they're not eating the bugs, right? So well, everything are, that we have. Are spiders also classified as bugs? I don't think so. They're yeah, insects. They're right? arachnids. Arachnids. Um, so anyway, um, there is a tremendous amount of things to praise our creator for. You can look around, you can say, I am thankful for the mountains, for the, for the sky, for the air that we breathe. We don't have to pay anything for the only people that want us to pay for air, are the, the crazy Satanists who, uh, who think the, the climate's changing and, um, you know, we'll, we'll call it that. That's our rant for the day. Um, today is a Babylonian, um, holiday. So Thanksgiving. It is Thanksgiving. It is the... Fifth day on our creator's calendar. It is the eighth day of his month. Tonight is a new moon. Ooh. So tonight, everybody, new moon. Okay. You want to blow your shofars. Uh, new moon, um, 29th. So tomorrow is a brand new month. We are in month nine after this. And so here we are. This is the 24th day on the, the Gregorian Babylonian calendar. If anyone wishes me happy Thanksgiving, I will say have a great day. Um, I'm not going to say Happy Thanksgiving to anybody out there because that would be like wishing people Merry Christmas or Happy New Year or Happy Easter. Um, that's Those are all pagan. Uh, say Happy Easter. I think people always say Happy that Easter. That doesn't sound right to me. Happy Easter. Yep. <laughs> it's right. not Merry Easter. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. It just doesn't sound right. <laughs> it's, it's Happy Easter and um, it's all satanic. It's all Babylonian wizardry and um, we shouldn't be dealing with any of this. Okay, Luke 5. Everyone ready? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, here we go. And it came to be, while the crowd was pressing upon him to hear the word of Yahuwah, that he stood by the lake of Gennesar. And he saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. And entering into one of the boats, which belonged to Shimon, he asked him to pull away a little from the land. And he sat down and was teaching the crowds from the boat. And when he ceased speaking, he said to Shimon, pull out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Shimon answering said to him, Adonai, we have toiled all night and caught none, but at your word, I shall let down the net. And when they did so, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. And they motioned to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they were sinking. And when Shimon kept Asad, he fell down at the knees of Yahushua saying, Depart from me, for I am a man, a sinner, O Adonai. For astonishment had seized him and all those with him at the catch of the fish which they took. So too were Jacob and Yochanan, the sons of Zabadi, who were partners with Shimon. Then Yahushua said to Shimon, Do not fear. From now on, you shall catch men. All right, let's discuss this, boys. What just what event just happened here? Uh, a kind of a miracle for them because these guys hadn't caught any fish. They're pro fishers. Yeah, and the, and all of a sudden he goes, go out and catch some fish. What do you mean kind of a miracle? Uh, for them, it's a miracle for the fish that they all caught because they haven't caught anything. Yeah, they haven't caught anything. But these are, per- like Kate said, these are professional fishermen that were blown away, that they were freaking out, right? They, these This was a miracle. They caught more fish than two boats could 
hold, right? The boats were sinking, right? Did right. you catch up yeah. in yours? Okay. So what are what are we what are we led to believe here? What 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 happened exactly? And why is um that Yahusha controlled the fish, right? He controlled all the fish to get in a certain area to where Shimon could basically catch all of them. Yeah, and, and it, it was so much fish. I mean, you would have to have an enormous amount of fish to drag a boat down, right? You're talking lots of fish. And so this this freaked um Shimon out a little bit, right? He, he um he, he's he's freaked out. Yeah, he probably doesn't know he's the Messiah. He probably just thinks he's like a, a prophet of some kind. Yeah, and what he says here at the very end of this, and I suppose the main reason that we have 153news.net is because 153 is it means it means sons of Elohim in in Hebrew gematria. And it it literally means what he's talking about right here is these guys were all fishermen. And what he says is, do not fear, from now on you shall catch men. What do we make of that? What that? What he's saying? What is he saying? This is that? basically you're going to become fishers of men. You're going to be able to uh, teach people the word. You're going to be able to. That same miracle that he was able, they were able to catch the fish, is that is the same miracle they're going to be able to catch men. Now, how do we catch men? By teaching the word. Yeah, men have to be receptive to the truth. The men, we're not going to catch any man who's not looking for the truth. If there, that is not the men that we will catch. We will catch people who are indoctrinated into every kind of religion out there. And at some point they hit the truth. And if you can hit, hit the time on the head with them, you could possibly catch them as well. And so, yeah, we need to all be fishing for men, catching men. And have you brought the boats to land? They left all and followed him. And it came to be when he was at a certain city that see a man covered with leprosy saw Yahushua and he fell on his face and begged him saying, Adonai, if you desire, you are able to cleanse me. And he stretched out his hand and touched him saying, I desire it, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left him and he ordered him to say it no more, but go and show yourself to the Kohenim and make an offering for your cleansing as a witness to them as Moshe commanded. And the news about him was spreading even more and large crowds were coming together to hear and to be healed by him of their sickness. But he was withdrawing himself to a lonely place and praying. Okay, what do you make of this? He was withdrawing himself to a lonely place and praying. What did you say in there, Kate? What he, you withdrew, he withdrew into the wilderness and went to pray. Okay, why does he keep going in lonely places? Why does he keep going to pray? It's probably really hard to pray when there's a bunch of people. Who is he praying to? You. If, if the Christians say that he is God, is he simply having in his in his mind? Is he having that discussion with what should he do in the next day or what uh, is he going back and forth in his mind? Yeah, you know what should I do? You know, we all have a great brain, so we can sit there and we. I, I do. I don't know about anyone else, but I sit there and I will task my stuff the next day. I will think, what could I do? What I just run it back and forth in my mind. That doesn't make me more than one person, I don't think. It makes me that I sit here and, and I, maybe I talk to myself, plot things myself. But if he's going to pray, who is he praying to? Yeah, he's going to be praying to Yah. Yeah, and so it's obvious if he's the son, he wouldn't be praying to himself. It's, it's just seemed very odd. He'd be having that conversation. Okay, 17. And on a certain day it came to be, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and teachers of the Torah sitting by, who had come out of every village of Galil, Yahuda and Jerusalem, and the power of Yahuwah was present to heal them. And see, men brought on a bed uh, on a bed a man who was paralyzed, and they were seeking to bring him in and lay him before him. But having found no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiles into the mist before Yahushua. And having seen their belief, he said to him, "Man, your sins are forgiven you." Now. There's, these are kind of, I don't know. He said before, somebody asked, like, a, who was it? A um, Somebody was sick along the road, and they said, who was it that, that his parents sinned or this guy sinned? Was it the blind, blind guy? guy? Blind guy. So this one, this guy, he clearly says, man, your sins are forgiven you. And this guy, what did he have exactly? He had paralyzed. He, he like, couldn't move. So are we to think that he sinned somehow? That he was able to do this, or why did Messiah Yahushua just tell him, Your sins are forgiven you? I think it's the way Yahushua was teaching, right? He was teaching, and the people came in, and I think he was trying to make like a point saying, He has the power of forgiveness of sins. That guy may not have like sins to you. I mean, everybody sins, right? So I think he's just saying, I think he's making a point here, showing his power, saying, Your sins are forgiven. I now have this power to do this thing. Yeah. I would think that a person born 
uh, blind or lame or something is wrong with them, that that wasn't on them, right? However that happened, however they ended up in that state, it is a test from our creator. And, um, you know, I, I don't think it's so much a sin. Okay, 21. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who is able to forgive sins except Elohim alone? And Yahushua, knowing their thoughts, answering, said to them, why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, rise up and walk. But in order for you to know that the bin of Adam possesses authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And at once, having risen up before them, he took up what he had been lying on and went away to his house, praising Elohim. And astonishment seized them all. And they praised Elohim and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen extraordinary matters today. And after this, he went out and saw a tax collector named Louis sitting at the tax office and said to him, Follow me. And he, having left all, rose up and followed him. And Louis made a great feast for him in his house. And there, was, there were a great number of tax collectors and others who sat down with them. And for those who have never heard this, this chapter or the tax collectors of, of the, their hated people, as you guys probably know, when I say the word IRS, you guys probably all are struck with fear of that organization, especially if you're from the U.S. If you're not from the U.S., it doesn't matter. But that is a, um, that is a thievery company of the U.S. It's not even a, a government corporation stealing your money. Okay, 30. And the Pharisees and their scribes grumbled against his Talmudian saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Yahushua answered and said to them, those who are well do not need a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And they said to him, Why did the Talmudian of Yochanan fast often and make prayers, and likewise those of the Pharisees, but yours eat and drink? And he said to them, Are you able to make friends, make the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? But day shall come when the bridegroom is taken away from them. Then they shall fast in those days. And he also spoke a parable to them. No one puts a piece of a piece from a fresh garment on an old one. Otherwise, the fresh one makes a tear. And also the piece that was taken out of the fresh one does not match the old. And I got to thank Brother Glenn from this one. Um, this one was, you know, obviously uh, it's, it's something that we must think about because Messiah Yahushua is, you know, it's, it's very clear for those who we've, we've discussed this before, but I, we do need to take the time to discuss this again. If you take a cling, if a brand new piece of fabric and you put it into some clothes that have a hole in it, the first time you wash that, it's going to shrink it. And it's going to pull everything together. It's going to mess your shirt up. And so that's what he's saying. You're not going to put a new piece of, uh, of a garment on an old one. And then the, the, the next one that says, and no one puts new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the new wine shall burst the wineskins and run out, and the wineskins shall be ruined. It was an animal um, storage system. Like they, you, it's like a, some sort of an inside of an animal uh, that they call a wineskin, and they, they put the wine in there, and as the wine ferments, it blows up and goes down. But if you attempt to do this twice, if you have fresh uh, grapes, and you, you, you take the grape juice and you're trying to make wine out of it and you do it twice because the animal skin has already expanded and gone back and forth. It will become brittle and it will break open. So the entire point of this is Messiah Yahushua did not come to hang out with the Pharisees and Sadducees and to mend their doctrine. Their doctrine was evil. Their doctrine is anti-Torah. The Pharisees and Sadducees are not law keepers. They have their own religions, just like Christians, just like Mormons, just like Catholics. They all have their own way that they go, and it is not of Yah. And so Messiah Yahushua did not come to patch old, broken trash. He came to put together a new system, and this is the new system. He says, but new wine is put into fresh wineskins, and both are preserved. 39. And no one, having drunk old wine, immediately desires new, for he says, the old is better. Okay, um, everyone, how you guys doing? I got two people yawning here. Are you guys okay? Yep. It's a little early in the morning for us. All right, well, um, anyone have anything?
No, we will be live tonight. Maybe. Maybe Possibly. live for a lot. We're going unless... to give it our best. Yeah, unless the Hallelujah you Scripture Grifter's there. And it's, since it's the new channel, we don't expect more than maybe one or two people live. But we are still going to go live. We are still going to do this, even if there's nobody here. Um, because we know at some point, um, somebody somewhere will listen to these. And hopefully, it only takes one life to change. And that's all we're looking for. If people will take the Torah, and they'll take Messiah Yahushua, and they will grab that into their life and they will become bound in his love, bound in his ways. And then you will change your life. You will change the world you are in. And it is for the best. All right, everybody. Uh, I guess that's it. That's it. Shalom. Shalom, right. everyone. Shalom. Goodbye.